Hello everybody. In this tutorial, I want to show you how we can do a regression analysis when we have an Eddie Hofstede plot, when we have uh, analyzed our enzyme data and want to find out Vmax and Km and the typical enzyme parameters. So here we've got our substrate concentrations and the corresponding rates. Now let's have a look first with a, just a simple standard michaelis menten plot and let's see if this enzyme actually follows a michaelis menten behavior. So I highlight the cells down here with left uh, mouse button, go to insert and in the ribbon I go to charts and a scatter plot. Uh, so that would be my Michaelis Menten uh, plot. On the y axis, I've got the rate, and on the x axis, I've got the substrate concentration. And we see it is a reasonably good Michaelis Menten. It's not an ideal curve, but the reason for that is that these are experimental data and we just uh, record what we get. Okay, good. Now, with the Michaelis Menten uh, plot, we cannot determine an accurate Vmax value. We can make a judgment. Maybe our Vmax is around 35 micromolar per minute. It must be definitely larger than this last value here. So maybe 35, maybe 40 micromolar per minute. But with a Michaelis Menten plot, we don't know how uh, big this is. So, Alternatively, we can do an Eddy Hofstede plot. So let's get rid of this Michaelis Menten plot here. And we know that in an Eddy Hofstede plot, what we need to do is we need to calculate the values for rate over substrate concentration. And we plot that just simply versus the rate of the reaction. So we can do that very easily. So rate over substrate, uh, we let Excel do that. So rate divided by the substrate concentration gives us this value. And the rate itself is just simply this value over here. So here we get these uh, values. And all I need to do now is highlight uh, these and with the left mouse button and clicked and this black little hair cross down in the corner that you see here, just drag it down and Excel will fill in these uh, numbers according to the calculation. So let's have a look uh, what our Edi Hofstede plot looks like. I highlight the cells, I go to insert again and I do a scatter plot. And here I've got my scatter plot for that. And obviously we need to label the axis a little bit. We can make it a little bit bigger. So here, of course, this would be an Edi Hofstede plot. Edi Hofstede. And the axis uh, we have on the, on the Y axis, we have the rate. So that's the that's the rate here, and that was micromolar per minute. And on the x-axis, we got rate over the substrate concentration. And that, of course, would have the unit micromolar per minute. And the unit for the substrate concentration was again micromolar. So that's the unit here. Now here we've got our Eddy Hofstede plot. And what we now want to do is we want to find out uh, the parameters for the enzyme. So I left mouse click and highlight all the numbers uh, or all the data points here with the uh, right mouse, I click on it and add the trend line for this. So here I get a trend line. 
and we can move that a little bit over. Uh, we see not all data points are exactly on this uh, line of best fit, but it is a reasonably straight line. We can display the equation and display the R squared value. And this is what we find here. And we now uh, need to sort of figure out what's what in the Eddie Hofstede plot. We know that the y-intercept, so if we extend our line, the y-intercept, this point here, would be the v-max. And we can directly read this from this equation here. So here the equation that is the y-intercept, and that gives us 32.613. And we can also find the uh, gradient of that, because we know in an Eddie Hofstede plot the gradient, this gradient here, that is negative km. And we can directly read it here, that is our gradient, so the gradient here is negative 19.106. And of course, this gradient would have, the Km would have the unit micromolar. And if we don't want the negative signs, we we'll just cancel them out, so we have Km equals around 19 micromolar and the max uh, equals around 32.6 micromolar per minute. So that is what we would get from our Eddie Hofstede plot. But obviously there is some experimental variability in it and some uncertainty. So if we did this experiment, uh, let's say tomorrow again, we might get slightly different numbers. So what we have here is just simply a sample. And what we really are interested in is what is actually the true population value for Vmax and Km. And luckily we can do that uh, quite easily. So what we need to do uh, in order to find out the Vmax and Km population values or the 95% confidence interval for these uh, for our Vmax and Km is we can do a linear regression analysis. So how do we do that? Uh, all we need to do is basically we need to harness the power of Excel. So here are our data, rate over substrate versus rate. I just format that a little bit nicer so that we can see it properly. So we put that in like that and make it a little bit bigger. So then we have uh, everything that we need. And in Excel, there is a very clever tool, which is called the uh, Data Analysis Pack. I'll show you where this is. So you go to data and hopefully you've got the data analysis tool pack installed, which you find here, data analysis. If you don't, there are uh, quite a few YouTube videos that shows you how you can install it. It's very easy. You just simply go to add-ons uh, in Excel and install it. So we are going to data analysis and on this drop down menu here, we go to regression. Okay, so we go to the regression and we fill in the uh, required information. So it asks us about the input of the Y range. So that was our y, y range here. That was on the Y axis. So we fill that in and we take the label with us. So just by left mouse click down, I highlight these cells. Now do the same for the X range. That was here our X values on the X uh, axis. So uh, again, highlight down. 
we have labels, so we tick that box, and we want a 95% confidence interval for our data. Now, uh, what we want to do is we want an output, and let's say I want a new worksheet for that. So I click on that, and that looks uh, pretty good. I don't have to do anything else, so OK. Let's see, and here is my output of the data that Excel has calculated. And again, I make this a little bit bigger so that we can see it properly. So what have we got? We've got a lot of summary data. We've got a, a squared value. But what we are really interested in are these data points here. This intercept here that I've highlighted, that actually is our Vmax. That's the intercept with the uh, y-axis. And this here, which is called rate over substrate, that actually is the gradient. And in this case, it is the negative gradient. So it's negative, negative km. That is what these data actually indicate. And apparently I can't put that in. So negative km. I don't want that with the equal sign. It still says name. OK, so let's not worry about that. We know that this one here is the negative Km value. And we've got Vmax. So what have we got now? We've got some uh, information which we can uh, very easily interpret. We've got here uh, actually Excel calculates the uh, Vmax from this data and it tells us that here Vmax would be 32.613 and we have the unit micromolar per minute. That is this value here that we get immediately and for Km or rather negative Km, we get this value here. So we get this value here, negative 19.106 micromolar. And if you look at these data, at these what Excel calls coefficients, these are exactly the same numbers that we had on uh, the um, uh, equation. So if we check that, Vmax 32.613, 32.613, Km we got, for negative Km we got negative 19.106, and again that is the value that we got here. So these are the coefficients, but we also want to know what are the 95%, what is the 95% confidence interval, or we could also say the 95% margin of error, or we can say what is the lower bound, lower bound and the upper bound, upper bound for Vmax. Now we've got this here uh, served literally almost like on a plate. So the lower 95% value is this one here. So Vmax, the true Vmax value is somewhere between 29.73 and the upper one would be 35.5, 35.50, and the unit is obviously micromolar per minute. So we know, or we are very confident that the true Vmax value, if we did this experiment several, several, several times, 
we know that the true Vmax value must be somewhere probably between 29.73 and 35.5 micromolar per minute. Now, what have we got for negative Km? So negative Km, again, we can look at that. It is somewhere between negative negative 22.934 and also negative 15.278 negative 15.278 rounded and the units are micromolar. Now obviously we have a negative sign here. So uh, what we want to do is we want to get Km and therefore we cancel out the negative sign and because we are sort of a negative gradient we need to turn these numbers around so we could would get Km of 15 0.28, I just do two decimals, and 22.93, and the unit for Km is micromolar. So that means we are fairly confident that our Km value is somewhere between 15.28 and 22.93 micromolar. So with this regression analysis, we can very easily uh, find out the confidence uh, interval or the uh, lower and upper bound for our Km and Vmax if we have uh, these, uh, just our substrate and rate. We convert that into an Evi Hofstede plot and from that we carry out the regression analysis with the data analysis tool pack and get our confidence interval. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.